Hello, and welcome to the Career Compass program, which includes online learning sessions, podcasts, videos, webinars, white papers, and whiteboard videos, all specifically designed for NAVFAC. Please check the Career Compass Resource Center or CCRC often for updates and new content to support your learning. This content will assist with learning and development within the 20 non technical competencies outlined in the Workforce Development Strategy. Today's topic is Cloud Computing Models, Technology and Security in Support of the Technology and Data Management Competency. Throughout this video, you will see a paper pencil icon on the top left corner indicating a workbook activity. When you see this icon on the top left corner, it means we'll be asking you to write something in your workbook or refer to your workbook. If possible, download the workbook from the CCRC before continuing with this course. However, if you are not able to, no worries. Just use any piece of paper and write your thoughts down on that. You can always transfer that to the workbook later. On completing this course, you will be able to describe various cloud computing models, their benefits and drawbacks, and their security implications. You will understand which cloud computing model is appropriate depending on the need and circumstances. So you know what to expect from this video, here is a summary of our agenda. We will go over three types of cloud computing services and discuss their main benefits and uses. We will discuss the drawbacks of each type of service. And lastly, we will discuss security implications of cloud computing. Large organizations like the Navy have a lot to gain from migrating IT systems to the cloud. Organizations increasingly rely on cloud services. Corporate IT expenditures have been shifting away from in-house toward the cloud, and the trend appears to continue. The move to the cloud may be an organization's choice or the result of an existing provider's own shift to cloud-based business models. The three forms of cloud computing are Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS, in which providers supply compute, storage, and networking infrastructure along with the virtualization layer. Users must then install operating systems, support applications, and data, and handle all of the configuration and management associated with those tasks. Examples of IaaS services are DigitalOcean, Alibaba, and Google Compute Engine. Next is Platform as a Service, or PaaS. Here, providers offer hosted remote operating systems, middleware, such as databases, and other developer tools in the cloud environment. PaaS products include Oracle Cloud Platform, Elastic Beanstalk, and the Google App Engine. Finally, there is Software as a Service, or SaaS. Here a provider offers applications on demand. Users simply log in and use the application that runs completely on the provider's infrastructure. Typically, SaaS applications are totally accessible via an internet web browser. SaaS providers manage all IT resources. Examples of SaaS include Salesforce, Dropbox, and Google Workspace. In an IaaS service model, a cloud provider hosts the infrastructure components that are traditionally present in an on-premises data center. This includes servers, storage, and networking hardware, as well as the virtualization. Cloud companies like Rackspace offer these services. IaaS is made of highly scalable and automated compute resources. It allows businesses to purchase resources on demand and as needed, instead of having to buy hardware outright. As opposed to SaaS or PaaS, IaaS clients are responsible for managing aspects such as applications, runtime, operating systems, middleware, and data. However, providers of IaaS manage the servers, hard drives, networking, virtualization, and storage. Some providers offer more services beyond the virtualization layer, such as databases or message queuing. There are specific situations when IaaS is most advantageous. 
Startups and small organizations may prefer IaaS to avoid spending time and money on purchasing and creating hardware and software. Larger organizations may prefer to retain complete control over their applications and infrastructure, but they want to purchase only what they actually consume or need. Organizations experiencing rapid growth may prefer the scalability of IaaS as they can change out specific hardware and software easily as their needs evolve. Anytime you are unsure of a new application's demands, IaaS offers flexibility and scalability. IaaS provides increased speed and agility by offering on-demand, self-service applications to compute, storage, and networking resources in the cloud. Developers and application owners can get access to infrastructure to run their applications in minutes, and the cloud provides resource elasticity to scale up and down, providing flexibility that isn't typically possible in an on-premises environment. Platform as a Service, PaaS, is a cloud computing model where a third-party provider delivers hardware and software tools to users over the internet. PaaS providers build on IaaS, but include development tools, operating systems, and databases to build applications. Usually, these tools are needed for application development. A PaaS provider hosts the hardware and software on its own infrastructure, freeing developers from having to install in-house hardware and software to develop or run a new application. PaaS enables you to deliver everything from simple cloud-based apps to sophisticated cloud-enabled enterprise applications. You purchase the resources on a pay-as-you-go basis and access them over a secure internet connection. Like IaaS, PaaS includes infrastructure, servers, storage, and networking, but also middleware, development tools, business intelligence services, database management systems, and more. PaaS is designed to support the complete web application lifecycle, building, testing, deploying, managing, and updating. Utilizing platform as a service is beneficial, sometimes even necessary, in several situations. For example, PaaS can streamline workflows when multiple developers are working on the same development project. If other vendors must be included, PaaS can provide great speed and flexibility to the entire process. PaaS is particularly beneficial if you need to create customized applications. PaaS development tools can cut the time it takes to code new apps with pre-coded application components built into the platform, such as workflow, directory services, security features, search, and so on. Platform as a service components can give your development team new capabilities without your needing to add staff having the required skills. PaaS offers development options for multiple platforms, such as computers, mobile devices, and browsers, making cross platform apps quicker and easier to develop. A pay as you go model makes it possible for individuals or organizations to use sophisticated development software and business intelligence and analytics tools that they might not be able to afford otherwise. Because the development environment is accessed over the internet, development teams can work together on projects, even when team members are in remote locations. This type of cloud service also can greatly reduce costs, and it can simplify some challenges that come up if you are rapidly developing or deploying an app. The most familiar cloud model to most people is Software as a Service, SaaS. This includes small programs like apps in a browser or cloud-based email programs, video services, and photo storage. For organizations, it might include applicant tracking systems, customer management software, and other more complex software. Software as a Service, also known as Cloud Application Services, represents the most commonly utilized option for business in the cloud market. SaaS utilizes the Internet to deliver applications, which are managed by a third-party vendor, to its users. A majority of SaaS applications run directly through your web browser which means they do not require any downloads or installations on the client side. Due to its web delivery model, SaaS eliminates the need to have IT staff download and install applications on each individual computer. With SaaS, vendors manage all potential technical issues, such as data, 
middleware, servers, and storage, resulting in streamlined maintenance and support for the business. SaaS may be the most beneficial option in several situations, including for startups or small companies that need to launch e-commerce quickly and don't have time for server issues or software, short-term projects that require quick, easy, and affordable collaboration, applications that aren't needed very often, such as annual tax software, and applications that need both web and mobile access. A key difference among SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS is the level of control that the enterprise has with the cloud stack. In other words, their control over the tools and services in the cloud. Next-generation IaaS offerings extend customer control deep into the cloud stack, with the option to manage virtualization, servers, and storage, while simultaneously offering higher levels of predictable performance, control, and security than first-generation IaaS platforms. Whereas first-generation IaaS offerings provide cloud-based virtual machines in a multi-tenant environment, meaning several customers may share resources on the same server, while only being able to access the portion of the server that's allocated for their usage, second-generation IaaS offerings can also provide on-demand, single-tenant physical servers dedicated solely to one customer. We've gone through the benefits of various cloud service models. Now it's your turn to decide. Suppose you've inherited a remote team of developers located in 16 states across the country. With a limited budget, you're asked to develop several new apps for use on multiple platforms. The need is pressing. You don't have all the hardware or software you need to develop the apps. Acquiring it would be a lengthy and costly process. What might be your best course of action? Would you use a SaaS solution, use a PaaS solution, or use an IaaS solution? Or would you build what you need in-house? Please write which model you would choose and why in your workbook. Pause the video and resume when you are ready. Given the urgency, the budget restrictions, your distributed team, and the fact that you don't have all the tools you need, it probably makes most sense to use a platform-as-a-service cloud provider. Of course, you might have other concerns we haven't talked about yet. In fact, the cloud may not be the right solution for you. Chief Information Officers, CIOs, need to be aware of the limitations of cloud computing when developing their cloud strategy to ensure it supports their organization's mission and objectives. Migrating to the cloud does not always yield cost efficiencies. Organizations need to assess the benefits of migrating to the cloud just like they do for any business decision and build in realistic cost estimates. Other IT solutions, such as automation and virtualization, also generate technological advantages. IT departments should include the cloud alongside other approaches when analyzing their options. Cloud migration requires continuous management to maximize its capabilities. The cloud should be thought of as a means to an end. The end must be specified first. We've talked about the benefits of cloud computing models. Now let's talk about some of the drawbacks. We'll start with the IaaS model. Several limitations are associated with the IaaS model. While the customer is in control of the apps, data, middleware, and the OS platform, security threats can still be sourced from the host or other virtual machines. Insider threats may expose data communication between the host infrastructure and virtual machines to unauthorized entities. While customers can run legacy apps in the cloud, the infrastructure may not be designed to deliver specific controls to secure the legacy apps. Additional resources and training may be required for the workforce to learn how to effectively manage the infrastructure. Customers will be responsible for data security, backup, and business continuity. 
Monitoring and management of the resources may be difficult without adequate training and resources available in-house. Organizations can run their own apps and services using PaaS solutions, but the data residing in third-party, vendor-controlled cloud servers poses security risks and concerns. The complexity of connecting the data stored with an on-site data center or off-premise cloud is increased, which may affect which apps and services can be adopted with the PaaS offering. Business and technical requirements that drive decisions for a specific PaaS solution may not apply in the future. If the vendor has not provisioned convenient migration policies, switching to alternative PaaS options may not be possible without affecting the business. PaaS may not be a plug-and-play solution for existing legacy apps and services. Instead, several customizations and configuration changes may be necessary for legacy systems to work with the PaaS service. That may limit the value of the PaaS investment altogether. In addition to limitations associated with specific apps and services, PaaS solutions may not be optimized for the language and frameworks of your choice. Specific framework versions may not be available or perform optimally with the PaaS service. Customized cloud operations with management automation workflows may not apply to PaaS solutions, as the platform tends to limit operational capabilities for end users. Integration and existing apps and services can be a major concern if a SaaS app is not designed to follow open standards for integration. In this case, organizations may need to design their own integration systems or reduce dependencies with SaaS services, which may not always be possible. Vendors may make it easy to join a service and hard to leave. Data may not be portable without incurring significant cost or in-house engineering rework. Many organizations require deep integrations with on-premise apps, data, and services. The SaaS vendor may offer limited support in this regard, forcing organizations to invest internal resources in designing and managing integrations. The complexity of integrations can further limit how the SaaS app or other dependent services can be used. Large volumes of data may have to be exchanged to the back-end data centers of SaaS apps in order to perform the necessary software functionality, presenting security risks. SaaS apps offer minimal customization capabilities. Since a one-size-fits-all solution does not exist, users may be limited to specific functionality, performance, and integrations as offered by the vendor. SaaS Solutions involves handing control over to the third-party service provider. These controls are not limited only to the software, in terms of the version, updates, or appearance, but also to the data and governance. Customers may therefore need to redefine their data security and governance models to fit the features and functionality of the SaaS service. Since SaaS apps often come in a standardized form, the choice of features may be a compromising trade-off against security, cost, performance, or other organizational policies. Because the vendor controls and manages the SaaS service, planned and unplanned maintenance, cyber attacks, or network issues may impact the performance of the SaaS app. Companies save time and resources when they no longer need to invest in expensive servers, deal with outdated software and hardware, and staff IT experts on site, but cloud servicing comes with risks as well. Storing sensitive customer data or other business data externally raises cybersecurity exposure. Migrating existing data or applications can be expensive and complex to the point that it diminishes any cost advantage that the cloud solution affords. Once you move your processes to one provider, it may be difficult to switch. In addition, hiring staff with cloud expertise has proven difficult for many organizations. The threat of data breaches is the number one concern of CIOs where the cloud is concerned. Breaches can cause great reputational and financial damage. They could potentially result in loss of intellectual property and significant legal liabilities. Account hijacking, insider threats, Malware and denial of service attacks remain constant threats. There are many layers to security in the cloud that need to be considered, and enterprises must feel confident that their data is secure.
To effectively mitigate the security risks brought by cloud usage, organizations should understand the data that is being uploaded and who is uploading the data. Cloud storage and sharing services are here to stay, but organizations must be able to balance the risks. A majority of organizations have already established privacy and compliance policies to protect their assets. In addition to these rules, they should create a framework of governance that establishes authority and a chain of responsibility in the organization. A well-defined set of policies clearly describes the responsibilities and roles of each employee. It should also define how they interact and pass information. Every system in an organization requires a regular audit. It is crucial that firms keep their IT systems in check in case of malware and phishing attacks. An IT system audit must also check the compliance of IT system vendors and data in the cloud servers. The three crucial areas that need to be frequently audited by cloud service providers are security in the cloud service facility, access to the audit trail, and the internal control environment of the cloud service provider. Employees from the cloud service provider will have access to your firm's applications and data. The employees at your organizations that carry out operations on the provider's system will also have access to this data. You must ensure that the cloud service provider has sufficient policies to govern who has access to sensitive data and software. The cloud service provider must give the customer the ability to manage and assign authorization for users. They must also ensure their system is secure enough to handle different types of attacks on client data. Privacy and protection of personal and sensitive information are vital. If a provider is not offering adequate security measures, consider seeking a different cloud service provider or not uploading sensitive information on the cloud. Organizations have different types of data that they store in the cloud. Different considerations should be made according to the kind of data the firm intends to secure. Audits of cloud networks should be able to establish malicious traffic that can be detected and blocked. However, organizations must also work together with their service providers to establish safety measures. The security of the physical infrastructure of an IT system determines its vulnerability at the onset of a malicious attack. The provider must assure its users that appropriate measures are in place. Facilities and infrastructure should be stored in secure locations and backed up to protect against external threats. It is becoming more critical to maintain privacy and security with more data and software being migrated to the cloud. IT groups must consider the cloud security risks and implement solutions to ensure the security of client data stored and processed in the cloud. Globalization creates additional security complications. Cloud computing services operate around the world, and the cloud server's geopolitical location is significant. For example, servers in distant or heavily trafficked locations may provide slow application response times. The laws of the country in which the data centers reside may dictate who can request access to the data. Technology regulations vary by country raising cybersecurity concerns with multi-channel supply chains. Major cloud services providers such as Microsoft, Google, and Amazon Web Services seek to mitigate these risks and ensure business continuity by establishing cloud computing regions and availability zones. These regional centers aim to ensure that clients can run services locally to offset the issues of latency, country sovereignty, and privacy. Suppose you are in charge of determining what cloud service to contract with for the next five years. In what order would you place these nine factors in terms of importance? Most important on top, least on the bottom. There's no right or wrong answer to this question. It depends on your organization and its needs. But think through the benefits, drawbacks, and risks of the various cloud services that we've just been through. What's most and least important in your mind for your organization? Think about how you would prioritize these factors and write them in order of most important to least important in your workbook. Pause the video and resume when you're ready. Again, only you can determine this. 
But in most cases these days, security and governance probably top the list. Cloud computing services have expanded and improved tremendously in just the past several years. They are now a permanent fixture in the IT space and largely due to their convenience and scalability, the clear choice of millions of organizations and users. But moving to cloud services is a decision that must be made carefully and with objectives in mind. It should never be made just to keep up with the herd or to appear sophisticated. Moreover, the cloud presents new and, in many cases, greater security threats and risks. These must be assessed and accounted for through governance agreements and strict protocols. Thank you for participating in this course. We hope that you gleaned useful and helpful information. If you have any questions, please contact your local BD17 representative or contact headquarters BD17 at NAVFACHQ Total Force Development at Navy.mil. Be sure to follow the instructions on this page to submit your self certification for this course. Or, if you have a smartphone, just scan the QR code with your camera and the email will automatically generate for you. Again, thank you for participating today.